What is convention bounce? And how long does it last? And what kind of impact does it have on election outcomes? You know, the facts may surprise you. A convention bounce is the surge of support a presidential candidate receives after their political convention. And what usually happens is they do polling before the convention and after the convention. The surge of support or lack of it is usually then reflected in the polls. In 1964, the Gallup organization, one of the longest standing polling organizations, was the first one to study convention bounds. And they studied the 1964 Democratic Convention of London Johnson. So here's what you need to know. Fact. Every presidential candidate gets some sort of bounce. Now, it can be positive or it could be negative. And even the negative can be just no movement at all. Having a high convention bounce ideally gives a candidate momentum as they head into the fall campaign. I mean, that's really the goal. They want to get the big mo, which is big momentum. One of the, one of the earliest candidates I can think of that got the big mo was... George H.W. Bush in 1988, he got a six-point bounce from his convention, which then put him in a tie with Michael Dukakis in the polls, who had really been leading consistently in the polls up to that point in time. And that momentum helped carry them into the presidential debates. Dukakis didn't do well in those presidential debates. The Bush campaign effectively used their campaign uh, commercial blitzing uh, to really help redefine Michael Dukakis. And we know in the end, George H.W. Bush won that election of 1988. Here's another fact. Having no convention bounce, historically, usually results in defeat. There's a 1972 where George McGovern got zero bounce out of his convention, and we know that he lost to Nixon. In 2004, John Kerry had no convention bounce, and he lost to George W. Bush. And then in 2012, Mitt Romney had no convention bounce, and he went on to lose to Barack Obama. There is one exception, however. In 2020, Joe Biden had 0% bounce from his convention, and we know that he later went on and defeated Donald Trump. Donald Trump, by the way, that year only had a one point bounce from his convention. Here's another fact. Having a higher convention bounce than your political opponent, opponent is not a sure sign of victory in November. You know, the biggest bounce we, uh, that we've had yet was in 1992. Bill Clinton walked out of his convention with a 16-point bounce, which gave him momentum running into that fall election. And we know that he ended up winning that election. But the second highest bounce we've ever had recorded was in 1980. Jimmy Carter walked out of his convention with a 10-point bounce after the convention. But we also know what happened that fall. Ronald Reagan won in a huge landslide. He ended up getting 489 electoral votes to Carter's 49. We, if we go back also and look, we see that six times throughout history, from 1964 up until about 2016, that the losing candidate had a higher post-convention bounce than their opponent. So you can see there that there's no assurances if you do have a higher convention bounce than your opponent that you're going to win. Here's another fact. Political convention bounces, on average, are short-lived. The average political bounce is five points at best in national polls. And they say that usually after two weeks, the polling simply reverts back to pre-convention levels. So the big question was, what kind of impact does convention bounces have on election outcomes? And the answer is, they really don't historically. They're just a snapshot in time. Hey, if you like what you saw today, you actually learned something, you got value from it, hit the like button for us. And if you haven't joined our Prez Politics family yet, hit the subscribe button now. Hey, if you like what you saw today, check out our other videos on our channel. I guarantee you, you'll love them.